I can't think of any worse situation than having a flat tyre and having to rummage underneath this van trying to undo rusty nuts and bolts to get a dirty old tyre that might even be flat. Oh, no, 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 no. So that's why we've opted to get a spare wheel carrier at the back of our van from Wheel I Am's. Williams. Williams. Oh, I can't get it right. So let's get this on our table and see what we've got. I really don't think this table is going to last much longer. I think I've repaired it about two or three times. I think it's only fit for burning. So what's your first impressions on opening this box? Well, for anybody that has got fabrication facilities, you've got to try and justify spending £320 on something that probably could have cost you 50 or 60 quid to make. Now, for me personally, it was not worth my time or my effort. Somebody else has engineered this product, designed this product, made jigs for this product so everything lines up correctly, tried and tested this product and got it to me within 24 hours. So it was a no-brainer for me to, instead of messing about, to just buy this product from Wheel I Am's, uh, which I think is a great product, probably the better one that's on the market. I've seen another one, it looks homemade in comparison to this. But this product does not come finished, it doesn't come painted, and I'm glad of that. I was about to request from Wheel I Am's that it came unfinished until I realized that that's how they sent it. We'll be finishing this ourselves a little bit later on. Now, uh, just a little note for Wheel I Am's here. Oh, well I am's, will I am's, will I am's, Williams. Williams. Is the, uh, the box come slightly damaged. Um, the metalwork inside had poked a hole through the cardboard and not really a problem, Nothing, no harm is really going to come to this steel. But I did order a box of uh, wheel locking bolts and it came in this package which was open, the bolts were loose and the bolts could have disappeared out the holes. So just a little issue for you guys, maybe you need to put some tape around the box and maybe a little bit of bubble wrap around these. Now you don't get any instructions in the box for this. When you purchase the product, you get a file to download with all the instructions in there on how to build it. So that's what we're gonna do now. That's what we're gonna get on with and let's make a start. Once downloaded, the clear instructions start with the drilling of your hinges. Measurements are given for the accurate drilling of two nine millimeter holes, one in the top hinge and one in the bottom. We start by pinpointing the positions with a sharpie pen, and I step up the drilling with first a 3mm, then 5mm, and finally a 9mm drill bit. The door in the open position allows for better access, and gives an open space behind to push through to. We always make sure we leave no metal swarf behind, thinking of arrow and the harm it may cause his pause. The instructions now suggest building the whole operator up, leaving all fixings loose to allow some movement. Rather than using the supplied lock nuts, I use some ordinary nuts to speed up the operation and allow for a speedier disassembly. Nikki helped make an easier job to now mount up the wheel carrier in a process to align, locate and mark the door mounted fixing for drilling. A visual check was all that was needed to then again mark with a sharpie the points for drilling. The whole apparatus could now be removed and area prepared for drilling. Off came our rear door trim, out came our sheep on insulation giving us full access to the area we needed to work. Past the point of no return now, I drilled two holes in our van door while Ricky ensured all the swarf was vacuumed away. Spraying galvanising paint into the cap, I find a cotton bud is ideal for applying a protective coat to the now untreated surfaces. The wheel boss in the kit is drilled out to accept standard wheel bolts. There's enough holes to accept all PCDs for both the 15 inch, 16 inch and heavy duty wheel rims. At the time of purchasing the kit you're given the option to buy some lock-in wheel studs. I thought this was a good idea and set out everything on the bench to pre-fit everything to make sure all fitted okay. It then soon became obvious that there may be a problem when it comes to fitting or removing the wheel and tyre from the actual wheel boss because there's actually nothing to support the wheel and tyre while you're doing so. So I'm here at Bat for Bolts in Sunny Scunny oh yeah, to buy some bolts. Now that was awkward enough trying to line up those holes while everything is on the bench. 
Now you imagine trying to lift this wheel on and off your vehicle and at the same time trying to thread in those bolts to bolt it all up and hold it nice and secure. So having returned from bat for bolts, my idea is to take a bolt, feed it through from this side of the wheel carrier and as it protrudes on the outside that will give us something to hook our wheel onto while we can then thread our bolts on. This is the top of our wheel carrier and there's no one bolt that goes through that top part. All of these holes are in different positions for the different PCDs and the different wheel sizes that may be needed to fit onto this carrier. So if we're going to hang something from the bolt, then it's no good putting in that top one. So if you're going to do the same, make the note, your hanger either has to be in this one or that one, or even both. So this is basically my idea. I have two bolts that run in the top of the wheel boss. I couldn't put one here because that doesn't align with my wheels PCD. So I'm using two bolts bolted from the inside. Now the problem there is that when you come to clamp on your wheel and put nuts on these to hold it in place, if those nuts corrode on it's likely that if you try and undo them the whole thing is going to turn and you're not going to be able to get your wheel off. Now I'm fortunate that I've got a welder and what I'm going to do is weld these in place. But for those of you that don't have those for facilities what you could attempt to do is put a spring washer just inside there to hold it all in place or alternatively wind another nut onto there and clamp another nut to the bolt and that should be strong enough to hold everything in place plenty of copper grease on there pop your wheel nut on pop your wheel on you'll be fine grinding away to shiny metal and removing the zinc coating from the bolts makes for good clean welding not my neatest of work but it'll do so we're pretty much at the stage now of putting a top coat onto our steel work. You've got a couple of options here. You could either paint or powder coat. I'm not a big fan of powder coat. It looks great, but if it gets chipped or damaged, you find that water can get behind the powder, rot the steel work, and before you know it, you've got an awful looking flaking powder coat, which is very, very difficult to repair. So I'm a big fan of Raptor paint, and that's what I'll be using. It's a very tough, durable finish, and if it gets chipped or damaged, you can easily repair it by just dabbing in a little bit more Raptor paint. But you decide to use either powder coat or paint, we do have to prepare the steelwork, because neither of those two products like these sharp edges, where you'll find the powder coat will chip off quite quickly and the paint won't stick to it. So we're going to bevel those edges off, round them off, to make our product stick a little bit better. Also, on some of these tubes, um, They've been attacked with an angle grinder to bring it to bare metal to do the welding and it's not been finished off that nice. That is quite a rough finish that's going to show through our paint or perhaps even show through powder. So we're going to do a better job at finishing off. And a quick note to Wheel I Am's, a little bit of extra finishing here guys, won't go amiss. After grinding off those sharp edges, the metal surfaces were polished with a scotch pad before removing any remaining residues with panel wipe. A light dust of primer was applied before filtering the two-part Raptor paint into the spray pot. With a full workshop this wasn't my best location to spray and I'm surprised I didn't get an absolute earful for my choice of drying room. Once good and dry the parts were brought to the table for assembly. My favourite Lanagard grease was applied to joining surfaces and I swapped out the supplied fixings for stainless steel ones and loosely tightened. Stainless steel bolts are very brittle and can snap, so at the door hinge fixing points I use the supplied steel bolts. Masking tape helps hold the bolts in place before sealant is applied along with rubber pads I had made to stop any damage from metal to metal contact. One more application of sealant and on goes our wheel carrier. A rubber pad was placed for protection at the mount between the carrier and van door. And here we had to deviate from the instructions, as the long bolts supplied, designed to transfer any forces, had no clear path through our door. I had considered using large spreader washers, but with a limited space, opted for a stainless steel plate, drilled and spread between the two stainless steel bolts. Now firmly attached, we could tighten up the wheel boss for a job well done. Right, you should do this. Why? Show people how easy it is. Okay. Do you want it? Is it heavy? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five minutes. 
This may be some time. Come back later. Well, here it is, the rear door mounted spare wheel carrier from Wheelians. Wheelians. Anyway, what can we conclude? If you're expecting something you can buy straight away and fit, this is not what you get. However, what you do get is something you can adapt quite easily to suit your own needs, hence the two bolts that I put on there to help me load this wheel on and off. Instructions that you download are very, very easy to follow. I had to make one or two adaptations from those instructions, which weren't too problematic. You also then have the choice of how you want to paint this product or powder coat it. I used a spray gun to paint it, but you could paint it with a brush. So I'm really pleased about this product. I think it was the best of three that was available on the market, which I think hits a fair price point as well. So I'm really, really pleased that I now don't have to go underneath the van in order to obtain my spare wheel. Thanks for watching.